Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, we got, we got ourselves a hot one here today, and I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, I am talking about the weather. The weather. Uh, we got another hot day here in Los Angeles. This is a couple of days. A couple of years ago, in 2012, we had a 100 degree day. So I don't think we're going to hit that today, but we're we're going to be in the ballpark. So please stay hydrated, make yourselves comfortable, and uh, stay cool along with the rest of the day. But welcome. Uh, now that I've got the. Uh, Weather report out of the way. I'm glad that uh, we took care of that. Uh, welcome to the seventh annual Women in Pain Conference, uh, Accepting Pain, Our New Normal. Uh, my name is John Garrett, and I am director of For Grace, uh, the orga uh, organization dedicated to promoting better care and wellness for women in pain, and the host of today's event. Uh, this is a truly wonderful day, so draw near to be empowered, enlightened, and inspired. Uh, now, welcome, welcome to those live in audience here, and welcome to those via our webcast. Women in pain from all over the world are viewing in. Uh, now, if you're on Twitter, please, please use the hashtag WIPCONF uh, to share questions and comments for our presenters during our Q&A sessions. We'd love to hear from you. Now, this uh, extraordinary day is due largely to the untiring, unwavering, 100% volunteer teamwork of our planning committee. And in the short time I have, uh, there are just too many people and organizations to help, uh, to thank, that is, to thank. So as many of you know, planning and staging events can be a challenge. But today is perfect proof that something truly special can happen. And that special that's happening today is that women in pain will find hope, encouragement, and inspiration, along with essential understanding that wellness and better pain control are well within their reach. Today, presenters and panelists are going to open a whole new universe of ideas and practices that can and will make a life with chronic pain more livable, enriching, and complete. These agents of healing are what we like to call self-care. So again, everyone you see before you today has donated their time and talents at zero cost. They are doing this purely out of the kindness of their hearts, out of the care and compassion for women and men in pain. Woo! Yeah, there you go. Give me a chance to have a little coffee here. There we go myself properly caffeinated. Okay, so we're uh, now for a few uh, important housekeeping items. Uh, we're happy to provide a wellness room complete with blankets, pillows, and uh, stuffed animals uh, for those of you who might need a quiet, restful place to manage the day. And you'll be able to view the live webcast of the conference uh, in comfort from there. This is located in the Joshua Tree Room right across from the restrooms at the end of the foyer over there. So please take advantage of our wellness room if the need arises. Also, some of you may not want to be filmed during our webcast, uh, so we have designated two out-of-view tables in the back to enjoy the conference without concern. Uh, last but absolutely not least, please visit Radine Marie Cook's award-winning art gallery in the foyer, which depicts the chronic pain experience in vivid depiction. Radine's amazing this is the conference uh, welcome art. Uh, it's uh, Radine's been doing this for years, and this this tops it. I, I'm, I'm, this is amazing. This piece is absolutely stunning. So please enjoy it. Enjoy the uh, her work out in the foyer. It's it's absolutely amazing, and she's an amazing woman. Uh, yes, there is one very important program change. Uh, unfortunately, our third speaker of the day, the ever inspiring Mackenzie Barrett, will not be here. I'm sorry to say, she had an emergency visit to the hospital on Tuesday. Uh, due to an RSD-related complication, and her doctors strongly recommended against travel. 
So um, Mackenzie is deeply disappointed uh, she couldn't join us, uh, but I'm happy to report she is doing better. Uh, so I'm sure you'll join me uh, with me in sending her the best wishes for a speedy recovery. Okay, now I have the extra special pleasure of introducing Ed Coughlin, uh, CEO, aka Top Dog, or Co, <laughs> co Top Dog. Right, okay, there we go. All right, uh, at the National Pain Report, in a relatively short time, uh, NPR has established itself as a leading new media source for people with pain, delivering on a daily basis meaningful stories that connect deeply with the pain community. Uh, the editors at the National Pain Report have placed a special emphasis on the impact of chronic pain on women, and in August, For Grace and NPR teamed up uh, to co-sponsor a women in pain survey to gain deeper insight and understanding into how women uniquely survive and thrive with the challenges of chronic pain. So, so to uh, provide us the fascinating results of the survey, please welcome Ed Coughlin of the National Pain Report. Good morning, everyone. Um, this will be fast, so pay attention, okay? Uh, we're, we're pleased to be here. Uh, we our, our dealings with uh, Cynthia and John and Four Grace go back a couple of years now. Um, and we, um, in our coverage, kind of stumbled across each other and uh, found that, um, that this is the type of an organization that, that we wanted to know more about. Uh, and then when, as we began to uh, cover chronic pain, this, this, uh, the subtext of how important women in pain is as a topic from the standpoint of undertreated, underdiagnosed, uh, had, has just surfaced. And, and uh, so we said, well, maybe we ought to do a survey and figure out if that's really true or not. And what we found out is, uh, is that it did. Uh, we have... Uh, these numbers that you're going to see today, by the way, stopped as a matter of September 2nd. We, we left the uh, survey open until the um, 9th of September, so uh, uh, some of the numbers have changed. One of them is how many people completed the survey, which is 2,400 women, which uh, in the online world is remarkable. 75% uh, of, the, of the folks who, uh, uh, and by the way, all women self-described in chronic pain. 75% uh, are 35 to 64 years old, 100 of them saying that they suffer from chronic pain, and uh, about three in five using opioids. So what do they suffer from? And obviously, I don't have to tell this audience, but they suffer from more than one thing often. And, uh, but here are, the, here are the four areas that uh, popped out uh, the highest. Fibromyalgia, not surprisingly, back pain, migraines, osteoarthritis, and the fifth is, uh, which we didn't post up, is, is uh, neuropathy, which is something I uh, have to deal with myself, so I was glad to see I'm not alone. All right. um, in terms of, uh, of, of what women are, uh, were saying about how they're treated, uh, I think you may recognize some of these numbers, right? There is a, 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 a belief, I think, at least among this sample, that there may be gender bias in terms of how uh, folks are, are dealt with uh, when, they, when they go to their providers. You can see the numbers at 87% feeling that providers discriminate against women, 84% uh, thinking my own doctor treats me differently, more than half would prefer a female doctor, and that uh, half do say that female doctors would better understand me. And uh, being a woman, and I will say in, in uh, my own bona fides, is I have five sisters, four daughters, and three granddaughters. So um, I've, I've, I've lived with some of, of these numbers, but 70% uh, believe that the menstrual cycle worsens pain. Uh, about half uh, who are uh, self-described as, uh, as postmenopausal believe that their, their pain is worse since that happened. And, but two-thirds, I thought this was an interesting number, two-thirds of the folks said, we don't think that women, or I don't think that women are more sensitive to pain than men. So uh, it was a, something we may want to explore as we, as we, go, down the, uh, uh, as we go down the track of, of dealing with more content here. Um, we found that the partner is generally very supportive. 71% uh, said they were either married or with a significant other, and 87% of those said, my partner is a pretty good partner. So that's a, that's a good thing. 
One of the things that uh, Beth Darnell at, at Stanford uh, asked us to include was to, to uh, explore a little bit whether uh, the women had, had experienced trauma as a child. Uh, and they self-reported, you can see the numbers, 43% of them uh, uh, described it as emotional abuse, 27% uh, tw sexual abuse, 24% said they witnessed domestic abuse. Uh, but because of the ways that you fight through all of these things, and do you think your chronic pain is necessarily linked to a childhood trauma? They said, no, nah, not really. Uh, more, than, more than half said, uh, said no, uh, and only about 20% said that yes, we think that may be, that may be the case. Um, if regular doctors aren't gonna aren't gonna get me fixed, then I'll try some alternatives. And uh, and women that were that answered our survey uh, did actually that. Seventy percent say they've tried vitamins and supplements. Sixty-five percent exercise. Forty-nine percent massage. Forty-eight percent prayer. So my the nuns that taught me in the Catholic schools will be happy about that. And forty-five percent said physical therapy. But Hey, what worked? Well, they prayer helped. That's uh, that that was a good thing, and massage helped. Uh, but one in th almost one in three said nothing was working, and that's uh, I think part of the frustration that, that that they were feeling. Exercise helps, but again, you can see if 65% of the folks try exercise and 23% of them say it works, then there's this where we've still got a challenge as to how we're going to align uh, what really can what people really can do to, to relieve their uh, their chronic pain. And and while vitamins, I mean, let me sort of go back. Vitamins and supplements were 70% of the uh, of the things that we tried. Uh, only 18% said they actually helped. Uh, but there is, uh, there is hope on the way. <coughs> Medical marijuana, you know, we, we did not have a, a huge number of people who said that they used it, but 86% of those who did say that it helped. So if you were going to sort of rank uh, those things uh, by percentage basis, then marijuana would, would go uh, to the top of the class. Uh, what do doctors tell women? Uh, you've all been there, so these, are, these answers should not be surprising to you. But three and four said that the doctors told me, hey, I'm going to have to live with my pain. 57% um, said, I don't know what's wrong with you. And almost half of the doctors tell the, their patients, according to these, uh, this survey, that, hey, the pain's all in your head. Um, so what have, what have we learned? What did the survey teach us? Well, the first thing the survey taught us was this is a very robust area and a robust topic. There, that, that, that people in pain will respond. I, by the way, I, I, let, me, let me stop. I'd like to introduce Pat Anson. Pat, stand up. Stand up here. Who is the editor of the National Pain Report and, and, who, and who, who drives uh, the content that you see on, on, uh, on our site. And, and as I think John mentioned at the beginning, the, the site is, is really beginning to take off over the last year. And a lot of that coming, coming from Pat's work. And Pat had a huge hand in, in developing this survey. In fact, one would say Pat may have had the only hand in developing this survey. Uh, so, but the summary of what we learned in this survey was women are in pain and they want to talk about it. And uh, they, they, they share their responses. As I said, we're over 2,400 responses uh, by the time this was, this was all done. Our, our previous, uh, it's about double of what we did as our, uh, the, most, uh, the largest topic that we've ever uh, explored before. And by the way, got a lot of emails from folks going, hey, how about men in pain? We gotta, yeah. You got to do something about men in pain. So we're figuring that out. Um, uh, women don't believe they're being treated equally by the, by the health care system, and they're frustrated about it. Uh, but, they, but the good thing is their own personal support systems seem to be working. Uh, they will experiment to manage their pain, uh, and they want better answers from physicians and the providers in the medical community. So that's uh, what, what we've learned. I'd like to invite you on our, our website uh, this morning. We put out a press release with Four Grace. Uh, Pat uh, did a story that deals with the, the details of, of, the, of this survey in a, in a much deeper context. And also, we, uh, we sent it out to our email list of about 6,000 people, letting them know about, about the survey. So already, we're getting quite a bit of response online and expect that that will continue as we continue to cover this important area and also, um, uh, I think, deepen our ability to, to, uh, to tell more stories in, in, in uh, hopefully impactful ways. So that is the results of our survey. Thank you very much. I hope you have a great conference uh, today. I know it was last year. And we're anxious to sort of watch and see how things uh, develop both today and going forward. Thank you.
Hey, amazing, Ed Coughlin. And uh, by the way, uh, Pat and Ed are going to be around a lot of the day. And please go up, introduce yourself. They are always uh, looking for amazing uh, stories about the chronic pain experience. And uh, again, the website uh, there is amazing. NPR is an amazing resource. Please check it out. Uh, it's it's. Uh, been going strong for about a year and a half now, and it just keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So uh, there we go. Speaking up, uh, this is my favorite part of the day. I get to introduce somebody I know pretty darn well, and because uh, I've been hanging around with her for about I don't know 30 some years now, and uh, in fact our 30 some 34th year together I think is showing up in uh, September 15th. So it's uh, you know we've been around. So uh, without further ado. Here she comes, uh, the uh, founder and spokesperson for Grace, uh, Cynthia Toussaint. <laughs> Thank you. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> wow. Thank you, John, for that. Um, you always say never needed introduction that I get annually with love. I love you, honey, wherever you are. Uh, thank you, Ed Coughlin, from the National Pain Report for that lovely welcome this morning. Did you remember everything, Ed? If you didn't, I have to remember everything. Okay. And also for unveiling the results of that wonderful Women in Pain survey. You heard it here li live. Woo! Our voices are getting louder. A big thank you and happy birthday to the Honorable Carol Liu. Carol Liu has authored for Grace's Resolutions three years in a row. Great work, Carol, and please go check out the resolution. It's framed beautifully out in the entranceway. I love this year's theme, Accepting Pain, our new normal. And in fact, at last year's conference, every time I heard a woman talk about acceptance, my ear got closer to the stage because I wanted to hear more. So that's where the idea was born, and after my sisters in pain and I, aka the conference planning committee, agreed on this theme, my beautiful sister Jen emailed me something called the chronic pain hero's journey, and because it revolves so much around acceptance, and I loved it. In fact, it perfectly framed the last 32 years of what feels like my completely upside down life. So I knew immediately that I wanted to share this with everyone in this room, everyone joining us via webcast. There are, there are all the cameras. Okay, and all women and men in pain, mostly because with this monomyth, rather than being victims of bodies betraying us, we are on a hero's journey, and to me, that is gold. So I was surprised to learn from some of my sisters that heroes is a loaded word, and in fact, because some of my sisters took exception to the word, this has been, at least for me, the most difficult conference to plan. It's kind of like when you put a lot of strong ingredients together in the kitchen. Sometimes your recipe can, you know, boom, blow up. <laughs> well, likewise, when you put eight strong, passionate, caring women on the phone together, those calls can get heated. I admit I boiled over during one of those. Remember, ladies? Had to excuse myself from the call because my pain had spiked so high out of control. So the problems, I'm tall with these boots on. <laughs> the problems that some of my sisters have with the word include feeling that they're not a hero or that it's too much pressure to be one because when you have chronic pain, it's hard enough just getting out of bed in the morning. Um, how can we give an award to an individual if we are all heroes? And it can be a patronizing term if coming from the outside world looking in all valid concerns. So to be clear, for our conference today, we are using the word um, not in reference as to how anybody else sees us, but rather as a self-empowerment tool, a way that we can see ourselves and give credit for what we survive every single day. And as I thought more deeply about the word, I realized that I have always seen men, women and men <laughs> in pain as heroes. In fact, about seven years ago, when we expanded for Grace's mission and I wrote our public service announcement, and that featured my brother-in-law, actor Jack Coleman, who was by chance at the time on the show Heroes and will be starring on an upcoming miniseries called Heroes Reborn. That word keeps coming up today. 
The first words that he said were, I want to talk to you about some unsung heroes. So perhaps that's why I gravitated so quickly and strongly to the hero's journey. Webster's defines a hero. You, you can tell I really thought about this, right? <laughs> they define a hero as one who shows great courage in the face of adversity. And while I love that definition, and in my mind, everyone in this room fits into it, as I thought about who my heroes have been throughout my life, I realized that Webster's forgot to say that heroes are human, and as such, they are flawed. And so to go back to last year's conference again, where is Christine? Hi, Christine. To go back to last year's conference, because I like to think of every year as a learning stepping stone, we must find forgiveness for our heroes, including ourselves, because as we have learned, that is such a monumental part of our healing experience. OK, my first hero. I've been waiting to cry for like a week. It may happen today. <laughs> my first hero was my dad. Gosh, daddy always made me laugh, especially when we went camping and played the mosquitoes are out or when he brought us home, us kids home gifts from his business trips. My favorite was that wonderful snot-nosed doll with the big yellow balloon, if you get the picture. Um, and <laughs> um, I always felt safe in his big, loving arms. But I don't believe in the childhood drama thing, by the way, Ed. I don't believe in those results. Um, when I was eight years old and my dad jumped off of a bridge, not only was that my childhood trauma, but indeed my first abandonment. But upon reflection, my dad lived with severe chronic pain, as well as what I now believe was mental illness, with virtually no support. So with that information, not only have I found forgiveness but I keep a picture of daddy next to my bed. I'm going to be showing it off all day long now that I finally talked about dad. He looks like a movie star, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Leslie? Yeah, OK. So my second hero was my mom. Gosh, mom taught me my strength. And in fact, after I got ill, she fought doggedly for 15 years to help me get a diagnosis and care. Mom was always the only one in the family like me, real, strong, straightforward. And we always worked as a team to keep the family together. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> so this year, when, when mom said, gosh, you know, Cynthia, I'm too old to fight for the family now. I've given up. You ought to just let go of all your siblings. You'd be better off for it. I was faced with the question of, what do I do when my hero loses her strength? It's a big question. But to be fair, I watched my mom raise five kids all alone with very little money. We have great illness in our family, and I'm not just talking about me. And in three days, my mom turns 82. And while I like to think of that as middle age, I think that's a bit of a denial there. So um, while this one is much more complicated and more painful, I am working really hard um, to find a place of forgiveness for my wonderful mom. And I know I'll get there. Speaking of John, were we speaking of John? <laughs> I don't know where he is, but um, on Monday, as he mentioned, he stole it from me, um, John will have been my hero for exactly 34 years. Happy anniversary, sweetheart, wherever you are. Um, because John is always by my side. Actually, where is John? Uh, OK, well, because he's generally by my side and always making miracles happen, forgiving John was um, not only easy, it's just, along with myself, it was easy and, and for some reason a, a natural process. So, you know, I always say to John, wherever he is, that I am so lucky because I get to work with all of my heroes. It's true. So in case I haven't yet found your Achilles heel, gosh, sisters, Liz, Jessica, Dick, Gary, Jane, just to name a few, <laughs> I know that somewhere, somehow, you are flawed, and that is really OK. And I think even our pain psychologists would agree with me on that, I hope. So speaking of, we have an extraordinary program today made with absolute love. We are going to hear from one of my new heroes, Dr. John Sorrell, about thinking and how our thoughts can either help or hinder us on the path to our new normal. We are going to explore the hero's journey. And then with our extraordinary interactive session using art, 
music, storytelling, and Native American culture, we are going to discover exactly where we are on our journey to acceptance and have a beautiful piece of art as a souvenir to take home. We are going to gain great wisdom from four inspiring women in pain. And get ready, folks, because today we are going to learn why it is good for our health to play. And then to be sure we've got it down, we are going to practice not just once, but three times. I love that. To my sisters, I say, ladies, this was the most difficult one of all. Not only did we pull it off, we pulled it off with absolute grace. I love you all. Though I don't see most of you, I love you all so very, very much. And whether you consider yourself heroes or not, you are my hero every day. And I'm truly blessed to have you be a part of my family. To everyone in this room, I say you are brave because by being here, you have chosen not to opt out, but instead you are taking the most difficult journey of all, one that I like to call the hero's journey. So I know that our first play break comes up right after me, and I will stop being so serious, and let's get serious about play. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you.